Sitting right beside me is the Hamilton Khaki Scuba. It's a diving watch from Hamilton, and I believe it is the best diving watch from Hamilton. It's under a thousand pounds. But let's talk about why. I have always been a fan of Hamilton. I actually have a khaki field sitting at home and I think they're kind of an underrated brand. Not many people rant about them, not many people rave about them, and I think people should. And this is the diving watch from Hamilton, the khaki scuba. It's a good looking piece, so let's get into some of the specs and some of the reasons why I think it's a good diver for below a thousand pounds. Welcome back to Time and the Rest at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always, and let's begin with the specs of this bad boy. So the case diameter comes in at 43 millimeters. And I'm not gonna lie guys, this is just that little bit too big for me. And I know that this is the best uh, diving watch that Hamilton do for below a thousand pounds. And I believe it is, but just personal preference here, this is that little bit too big. I have 6.5 inch wrists. This is 42 and it's on the border of being too big. So it's just a teeny bit over, but if you have bigger wrists, then it fit you pretty perfect. The case thickness on this model, according to our digital calipers, comes in at roughly 12.9 millimeters, maybe just pushing 13 millimeters, but for having a water resistance of 300 meters, that's not bad. Moving on to the bracelet and the case of this model, they both come in stainless steel. Now stainless steel is one of my favorite metals, if not my favorite metal. It has the durability that you're after, but also has that white reflective look in the light and it looks beautiful. The case and the bracelet is both made from stainless steel and also it's in a brushed stainless steel. Now brushed stainless steel doesn't show scratches as much as polished does. So I prefer brushed on sports watches because when you're wearing a sports watch, the likelihood is you might get it bashed, you might get it scratched. And the fact that you won't see these as prominently on brushed is a nice thing. It gives you that peace of mind. The bracelet itself is made from three links. You have the bigger center link and then the two smaller at the outside. But the good thing, the cool thing about this bracelet is that it actually has a really slight bit of polished steel just on the center links, the side of the center links just down here. And it's quite nice to reflect, reflect in the light and it looks a little bit different. I have to say though, I'm not a big fan of this bracelet. I think the, the clasp of it is just that little bit too bulky. It does have a deployant clasp at the back, which I'm a big fan of, but for some reason, I'm just not vibing with this clasp. It doesn't mean it's a bad watch, it just is my personal preference. What I would like to see on this scuba, if I'm being perfectly honest, is a rubber strap. I think that would look brilliant with this dial. Now the dial on this model is probably one of the most striking features about this model, and same with the bezel. The bezel actually is full ceramic. Now that is quite an expensive material to work with. So the fact that they've got a full ceramic bezel for under 900 pounds, or it comes in just at 900 pounds, is pretty impressive. The bezel on this model is ceramic, as I previously mentioned, but it's also, it comes in a dark blue color. Now this dark blue color wears wonderfully on the wrist, and it really contrasts nicely with the sort of black border to the dial. And if you want to look at this watch a little bit closer, then head to chismhunter.co.uk where we're actually authorized retailers for Hamilton watches. And if you're in the UK, head into one of our 29 stores and ask for Harrison and I might pop in, say hi. Continuing on with the detail on the bezel after that shameless plug, it was absolutely shameless, but I don't regret it. So the teeth are actually quite prominent. They're a lot more prominent actually than my Amiga. And what's a lot more prominent than my Amiga also is the clicks on the bezel. Now being a fully functional diving watch, this has a dot of loom on the bezel. And if you think about it, when divers are in their wetsuits and going to depths of 300 meters, they have quite thick gloves on. So they need to, or wetsuits, they need to be able to turn the bezel quite easily. And this is easy to turn. Actually, it's more easy to turn than my Amiga Seamaster that I have on at the moment. Either, there's two things that brands can do here. They can either go down the stylized route, like my Amiga, or they can go down the functionality route, like this Hamilton. So it is a tool watch. And I'll stop rambling and just show you what it sounds like. That, that's prominent. I quite like that, it's nice. The numerals on the bezel kind of look like they're in a white or silver color. I'd maybe say kind of enamel white and they're actually lowered into that bezel. Now, one thing that I would say about these numerals is 
they're maybe a little bit more difficult to read than my Amiga Seamaster that has quite big, bulky writing. It's not that they're hard to read, but they're maybe a little bit more difficult. But then again, this is 900 pounds and my Amiga is almost, was it four or 5,000 pounds? So, you know, you need to give and take here. Moving quickly onto the weight of this model, because every single time I do a review, I forget to do the weight. And then after the weight, we'll get onto the dial, but let's quickly check what it comes in at. So it comes in at 1200, 212 grams, which is actually a lot bulkier than I was expecting. It wears quite heavy on the wrist. It wears like a diving watch. The weight of a watch is an interesting one. Some people love that hefty hunk of metal on their wrist, whereas other people prefer slightly slimmer, more dainty watches. And I come somewhere in between in this category. The reason that I come somewhere in between is that I like putting on a more hefty watch from time to time. And that's where I have my Tudor Black Bay. That is that hunky, hefty watch that I feel quite bold and quite strong wearing. Whereas for my everyday wearer, I prefer a NATO strap or a rubber strap. And that firstly decreases the weight, but also in my eyes increases its durability as it won't scratch. But then there's a con. If you wear a NATO strap, it pushes the head of the watch up so it looks that little bit thicker on the wrist and I prefer slimmer watches. The moral of this story is that there's always going to be a give and take in luxury watches and nothing is ever going to be perfect to that specific person. I need to catch my breath. Give me two six. Moving on to the dial, it has a dark blue dial with almost a gradient. It goes from lighter blue in the center to a kind of dark, almost black blue at the corners, at the sides. There's no corners because it's obviously a circle. Oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> the hands and the indices on this model are highly reflective and they actually reflect the light really, really nicely depending on what way you turn it. And this highly reflective metal kind of feel looks a lot better on darker dials than it actually does lighter dials. And that's part of the reason why on lighter dials, like my Amiga, the hands are actually blackened instead of that highly reflective because when they're highly reflective, you kind of lose it amongst that white dial. Whereas when it's on a dark dial, it looks a lot more striking. Indices on this model are a combination of circles and kind of bigger rectangles that point inward. They're kind of like arrows at the 12, 6, 3, and nine mark, that took some mental <laughs> capacity. The dial actually features a 24 hour, hour markers. So below the 12 o'clock mark is 24, one o'clock, 13, two o'clock, 14, so on and so forth, all the way back to the 24 at the 12 o'clock mark. I think this is a really nice feature and it is quite useful, but just personally, I think it makes it look a little bit busy and I'm not as keen on it. The glass is sapphire crystal glass with anti-reflective coating, which is a really nice touch for a watch at 900 pounds. And then you get to the loom on this model, which is actually really, really imp impressive for, especially for the price of this model. I mean, this shines just as bright, maybe a little bit less than my Amiga. And my Amiga is obviously a lot more expensive. As you can see, it is quite bright in this room, but the loom is bright blue and it's on the indices and being a fully functional dive watch is also just here on the bezel. Moving quickly onto the movement, but before we move on to the movement, let's cover the crown really, really quick because I totally forgot to cover it. So the crown is really, really attractive. It's not too big, it's not too prominent, it's quite short and stubby, but still remains easy to turn. And I like this. I also like the fact that the crown guards aren't too aggressive. They slope up gradually, like a gradual incline, instead of being like a, a black slope on when you're skiing. They're, they're kind of maybe like a blue slope, kind of gradually going up. And I prefer that to the more aggressive crown guards. And I also prefer that because when you're bending your wrist, it doesn't dig into your wrist. It kind of is more flat, is more comfortable on the wrist, I would say. The movement in this model is the H10 movement, and this is an ETA movement. Now, before we move on to the specs of that movement, I have something to say about ETA movements. I like them. I do not think that ETA movements are a bad thing. I would much rather a brand pick the movement that they know works well than try and create their own and maybe it doesn't go as well. I don't think ETAs are a bad thing. I think they are powerhouses and they are reliable movements. I actually have one in my Hamilton Khaki Field sitting at home and I've used several ETA movements. They're not bad, they're good movements. This movement is fully automatic, beaks at a frequency of 21,600 VPH, has a power reserve of a whopping 80 hours and has 25 joules. 
So why do I think this is the best Hamilton diving watch for under £1,000? Well, firstly, you're getting the H10 movement, which I know is an ETA movement, but it's still a really, really good movement with a whopping 80 hours of power. For 900 quid, that is really good. Just to give you a reference, my Amiga has 55 hours of power. So that's really good. It also has a water resistance to 300 meters, a fully ceramic bezel and a beautiful loom with a screw down crown and pretty attractive crown guard. So for under a thousand pounds, this watch would stand out to me if I was looking within that price range. And then it also comes down to the fact that I already own a Hamilton khaki field. So I do feel a bit of an attachment to that brand. It's almost like going back to BMW after, you, after you've bought another BMW. It's sort of comfortable. You know how to drive it, you know how to wear it, you know how to feel it. And that's why I would go back to Hamilton. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Time in the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison. As always, make sure to follow us on Instagram, which is Chisholm Hunter Watch, as we post some pretty interesting behind the scenes content. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you hit this little, little bubble over here to subscribe. And I'll see you next time.